This proxy score video is provided by Proxy Score, Real Lift, Ballistic Fab, Comp Cams, East Coast Gear and Axle, Harlan Sharp Roller Rockers, Automotive Spring Overload, Power Labs, and special thanks to Riot Fab and Third World Machine. All right, so this is probably something that many of you have been waiting for for a very long time. I know I have. This is my front suspension day. And I have got to show you what I am doing and also what took so long for this to come all about. Okay, so most of these parts are from Ballistic Fab and I picked these specifically for their design and what they are. These are the Unibolts cups. There is these uh, brass fittings and you can see these little channels here. Those are for the grease to be greasable. And then you have your grease dirt there and then your nut that locks it when you buy um uniballs in general none of them that i found remotely have this feature and a lot of times when uh you, you i mean you don't have any oil or anything uh after some use the teflon wears out after a couple of races and you're done and they just plan on rebuilding them in general I've read a lot of reviews on these about uh, people had them for years and they still haven't needed to replace them or rebuild them. So I'm hoping that uh, this will last for a very long time. So this will be my lower. Uh, and then these are my uppers. Okay, so this idea all came from, and I did talk about it a little bit before, from this little butte right here. This is a GM Taper upper. And this is for the, I believe they're called CTS suspension. And most companies will build an aftermarket upper control arm um, because when you look here, you can see it's just stamped um, or just bent metal. So they build them that they're stronger. And so this is a replacement pin for their kit. Um, when I've been looking for a lower pin, which this is the lower from that a arm that i cut off uh it is uh two thousandths bigger same taper and no one makes it no one wants to even touch the lower control arms probably because they're uh they're uh, d o e o e whatever you call it uh, rated so you can't uh, for highway use and just to get that come certified people just don't even want to deal with the liability or anything well, this is an off-road use, so kind of who cares? And so I'm going to build my own. And so this is where I got the idea from. So I have two problems. One, I could not find a lower pin. And then two, I couldn't find a ball where the inch would go through. In other words, Ballistic Fab is awesome with how they make their balls um, with uh, three-quarter inch five eighths and I believe half inch holes so you can build their joints however you want but they don't have any inch because everyone uses uh misalignment spacers that they throw in here and they do whatever they want and th but they just mill them all together uh, you can see here with the different colors that is hardened and when I asked ballistic fab to make me these with a inch bore they said that it would cost 468 dollars per ball okay think about that ouch i couldn't do that and so i went to my local machine shop and i told them what my uh plans were that i needed these drilled out and they're hardened so it may be a problem and i needed new pins look how beefy those are so that is the same taper as the bottom. And I mean, you can tell here, especially with the uh, the taper here, how much thicker it is. Um, and it's inch top. So this is beefy. That is monster. And I don't know anything or anyone who makes an inch shaft going through a uniball. Uh, so this is gonna be extra strong. This is stainless. Um, I'm gonna have to put it on there. I'm not really too sure. Uh, hold on one second. So my machine shop built these studs out of 17-4 H1100 stainless. 
and uh, I believe it's like aircraft quality, things like that. So it's very high tensile, uh, very good uh, uh, stainless for this. And I decided not to heat treat it. You can see here that the taper does go a little wider than the, I mean, at the very top here, it's, it's wider than an inch. And then you go an inch. Uh, so let me tell you what this cost me. So what it is, I got one, two, three, four, probably two. Oh, the fourth one is, uh, it's over here. And this is what it looks like built. And, uh, I don't know if I need all four. Uh, if someone decides to do the same thing, maybe hit me up and I can, uh, we can work something out with these. Um, so I, what I did is I bought more balls from uh, Ballistic Fab. So I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six. So to replacement with that. And uh, so to get these drilled out, and then I needed some uh, bolts specially made. Uh, sorry, not bolts specially made, but these pins right here for my shock mounts. They came, this is the shock mount here, the adjustable. Uh, they came with a half inch bolt, uh, I imagine for the uh, smaller you know, shocks, but my shocks are huge. And so I had to get all these drilled out. So two, four, six, eight, six of those drilled out. All for $580. They got me these bolts here, these Torx bolts and uh, um, I believe the nuts. I got to find those. Uh, this same company, what they do is they build uh, what are they called crane cams. Uh, these are the valves for the crane cams. This is one of their uh, uh, disregard pile, and I grabbed it. It's probably because of that right there. And they said I could have it. But they this machine shop makes valves. Uh, they've raced on uh, Bonneville Flats, uh, Steens and Sons. Um, but they did some awesome, awesome work and okay. Now let's go back. Ballistic fab 464, all of this, even my, uh, GM pins for 586. So I got one hell of a deal. The bad thing is, is teens and sons is always really busy. They have big contracts and everything. And it took them about two and a half months to finally build these. Um, but, uh, and so that's why it's been taking me so long to get everything. To get these, to get these, to get them all planned, to figure out exactly what I'm doing. Now here's the mock-up. I built this little platform here to hold on to the uh, uh, the spindle. I have my, uh, my... There, see that? My uh, rotor to level it up. And so this is just all just kind of sitting here, but this is how it's going to be. Here's the cup sitting. There's going to be about this big of a gap. Um, you can kind of see how, see that? It'll be about that big of a gap for it to rotate around. And because the top, see how the there's not much exposed with the bolt? It'll be right under there and... I will not have to do anything as in cut, trim, uh, grind down, anything. So, but that's going to work there. And then my top, I'll cut that out, notch that out. And that's where I'm going to put this. And it's going to go through there. And then I'll use, you know, that uh, bolt there to do my camber. And uh, that's my plan. That's how I'm going to do my suspension. Put it together, take it apart. Put it together, put, take it apart. That's the story of this whole build. You know, I guess that's why uh, King of the Hammers is the way it is. Because no one in their right mind would do what these racers do to accomplish what they accomplish. Uh, that's what I'm... Don't do this at home is what I'm saying. Uh, this is quite a job. Uh, taking apart, putting back together. I can see right there it's touching just a little bit. I gotta grind it. I can grind this uh, cup a little bit and that so I can get uh, full full, uh, full drop. You can look here. I mean, it's still up in the air the way it's sitting right here. This may be ride height. 
as in the angle of the A-arm. Um, and then when you look underneath, that ball joint on that uniball still has room to move. Uh, probably about a good half inch or so. And uh, for some more drop, I'm, I'm hoping 15 inches of uh, drop, um, which the solid axle on some of these Cherokees, they'll get like 10 inches of drop. But when you have the t when you factor in the teeter totter of wheeling, and one tire goes up and it forces the other one down, they'll pro they'll get more articulation than IFS will. That's the that's the drawback here. But I hope to catch them and beat them in the flats, and uh, hopefully the rear will articulate enough that I can get over the f get over the uh, crawling uh, obstacles good. So well, that's where I'm at right now. I'm definitely just mocking up and building as I go and uh, this is what I've come up with and as I can see everything's fitting everything's working I have to do some grinding but uh, that's it so I was going to use my TIG welder and weld all around this and make it as pretty as I can and all that but you can kind of see here I ground I weld I grounded I welded um, there was some type of contamination. I don't know if I got tips of magnesium in it or what, but it it was like bubbling. And so I was like, screw this, that and the gaps were huge. And I was spending so much time with the TIG. I'm like, you know what, this isn't perfect. I don't have a computer. I'm dealing with, uh, you know, a computer as in a cutting, cutting table, CNC, and I'm dealing with all of this and, I'm like, holy hell, this is gonna be a pain in the ass but to, to TIG it, so I decided just to wire feed it. And uh, that's how I that's how I did it. And what I did is I took this piece of cloth, it's wet it down and maybe steaming out, stick it inside here to make sure that uh, to protect the uh, the cup itself as I uh, as I burned everything in. Uh, make sure that dessert was protected and there's a little screw right here to help lock the bottom nut in um other side note is this is cast and so cast is the benefit about it is extremely strong bad thing about it it's really hard to weld to and to keep its strength and so uh as i was welding i was doing my best to uh, make sure it's up to temperature not throw water on it cool it down real fast uh, weld some place another place another place another place and just keep the heat on it and do it constant and uh, I hope that you know I don't have a thermometer a laser or anything to judge exactly what the uh, temperature is to be real technical but uh, I just did the best I could I mean that's, that's all I got and uh but I do think that how the web interlocks in there and goes around and around and I welded it all through and interlocked everything. I'm going to put a cap right here uh, when this piece is on. And uh, I actually think it's going to be pretty good. So as in the best I can do and how I weaved everything and it'll still retain strength and uh, and to be able to last. So that's uh that's it let me uh, throw this on and uh hopefully we can uh, finish up this video Whew, that took forever it is done one down one more to go that's it okay finally got the bottom painted welded up mounted and uh, it's looking fairly good. Uh, the only problem is, is that uh, bushings of the cup uh, was really hard to press in. And, or not really hard to press in. Once I pressed it in, it's been really hard for the ball to rotate. And like this is the cup and the bearings. There's an inner and outer uh, bushing. You can see right there, it says inner. Um, so uh, pressing that in, the ball uh, I did grease it up as well. It doesn't really want to move. And so you can see it's kind of leaned up a little bit right there. But uh, I'll just end this video now. You won't see it all up on all fours. But uh, it's going to 
there's a lot of information on this video so it's gonna be a long one hopefully you watch till the end to see the uh the lower arm built i got a lot of requests about it and so it's built um next i will do the front or the top which is just this part right here uh, welded inside the stock location so all right uh thanks for watching and uh we'll see you guys later